Hi, welcome to the Always Evolving Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elizabeth Fedrick. At times, we find that we're being harsher on ourselves than we would be on anyone else, really. We allow these negative thoughts to take over, and we wonder why does this self-criticism occur, and how can we break free from it? Joining us today is Shervin Lee, a registered clinical counselor. Shervin is here to help us to understand why we engage in negative self-talk and to offer some guidance on reframing it into neutral or positive statements. It's okay that we don't have it all figured out. We're all just taking it a day at a time. This is Always Evolving with Dr. Liz. Hi, Shervin. Welcome to the Always Evolving podcast. Hi, it's good to be here. Yes, I'm so excited to have you here. Tell everyone who you are and what you specialize in. Yeah, so my name is Shervin Lee. I'm a registered clinical counselor based in Vancouver, Canada. And in my practice, I do a wide range of things. I help people who live with chronic pain and addictions and a lot about cultural generation and generational trauma, especially coming from a BIPOC or Asian background. Well, and that really leads us into our topic of the impact of that interge intergenerational trauma and our, um, our upbringing, all of that, that really contributes to that negative self-talk that a lot of us acquire, right? And we develop that early on. And a lot of us don't even realize it's part of our lives until somebody points it out. Um, tell me a bit about that. How do you describe the negative self-talk that we're going to get into today? Yeah, and I actually got this from another therapist. So she calls it ants in your pants, an automatic negative thought. So ants, and they're kind of there. They're itchy. They there's so many of them, and just because you might get rid of one of them, it doesn't mean that they're all completely gone. And when they're there, it can seem like, how do I get rid of them? Or it's so itchy, what do I do about it? But when we figure out each kind of thought that we're having and really pay attention to them, we can work on reframing them. And not always in a positive way, but it could be in a neutral way. And I can give some examples to that. Yeah, and I, I, I would love to talk about some examples. And I think that's so important too, because for some people, trying to change it to positive feels so unrealistic and so yep. they can't even relate to that. And so then it's likely like, no, they don't even want to touch it. So yeah, if you could give us some examples of how maybe neutral is the more appropriate next step. Yeah. And with the ants in your pants, so those automatic negative thoughts, they're also forms of cognitive distortions. That's probably the more therapeutic term for it. And some of the distortions are should thoughts or should statements is a really popular one. And that can lead into that toxic positivity that we often put ourselves in, you know, oh, I should do this, or at the very least, like, um, I should do X, Y, Z, whatever. And you end up blaming yourself or putting that blame on yourself to feel like, okay, at least I have a job. So I should be able to do whatever or afford whatever. And you walk yourself into the spiral of just that negativity, negative self-talk, feeling bad and guilty about not doing things that you should be doing. So a neutral statement could be, you know, oh, I should cook all my meals because I'm trying to save money is the term that we're trying to reframe. And maybe the term, the way we reframe it in a neutral way could be, I've had a really tough week and I'm going to do what I can at my very best. I'll aim for three days a week where I've cooked meals and I'll be flexible with the other days. Mm. So you're not trying to make yourself feel better in terms of like, oh, you know, I work so hard, I'm going to treat myself. And that could lead into a different spiral. But it's more of acknowledging maybe some of the suffering or the pain that you're going through and allowing for that room to be flexible. I hope that makes sense. It does make sense. And it's really about finding that gray area. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it also, we don't just have to throw the whole thing out either and just say, forget it. But what can we do? What is even that small step that we can take towards whatever it is that we feel we should be doing, which we should ourselves all the time in terms yep. of like everything all day, never good enough. And so it's, it's putting the bar at a place where, it's good enough and good enough can be good enough. 
Yeah, I really like that, especially the idea of, you know, what is enough for you? Yeah. You know, at what point are you feeling okay and comfortable with that? Because it, when you keep chasing after milestone after milestone, it gets really exhausting because there's never that cap for you or you never know what is enough for you. But I think there's so much peace and it's so empowering to know, okay, this is enough. I'm happy with this amount. This is good. Yes. Where do you usually see that those thoughts were formed and like, how do you help your clients to even challenge that? Because I know a lot of times what comes along with this, it's the stories, the narratives, the I'm trying to live up to somebody else's expectations that have been projected onto us. So how do you even kind of like beyond trying to reframe them, even dig into like, where is it coming from and why do they keep popping up? I think you really nailed it in a few areas there. There are stories that have been built up over time, those beliefs and values, those core values that we learned when we were younger, because you don't know any better. And really, when do you know better? Because right. we keep learning every day. Yeah. So when you have a certain way of thinking that your family taught you or how society was like 10, 20 years ago versus now, you kind of have that foundation built already. So it's a lot harder to change the way that you're thinking or seeing things now. And that's why these ways that we think, these ants in your pants, these distortions, to me, I like to talk to my clients about them. I The context I give to them is, you know, these are behaviors, these thoughts and patterns that you have. And behaviors are things that can be changed. It just takes practice. It takes being conscious of it. You know, if you're noticing you're having these negative thoughts, try writing them down. And I know that sounds really silly, but when you vocalize them, you say them out loud, you write them down, you talk to someone about it, you're like, wow, am I really thinking about things this way? And you get a chance to take a step back and work on that reframing. And the more conscious you are of it in the beginning, it won't be that way later on because it's going to be more automatic the way you're able to reframe and to see things that aren't so negative all the time. That muscle memory is so powerful. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And the reason they're so active is because it, that's the muscle memory that's been developed. And when you can catch them, and I love that you're talking about writing them down. I think that's so important because when we can get that visual, we, we, we can really acknowledge that this is what's going on for us, then we can do something about it. But exactly. as long as we continue to ignore and avoid and all of that, then we that's where we get so stuck. Yeah. And the more stuck you feel, the less likely you want to do something about it. So that's why, you know, if it's taking out that pen and paper, writing it down, talking to someone about it, therapy, that's how we practice those muscles and they get better and stronger over time. Yes. For somebody who's maybe listening and they're like, I'm just constantly beating myself up. I'm constantly thinking poorly about myself. What are maybe two tips that, you know, beyond what we've talked about of how they can start to shift that again, not necessarily to positive, And I love that you make that a point, but how can they just start to pull out of the negative? I think the power of pausing is a lot more powerful than people realize because that's how you break any automatic cycle. Just taking a moment to stop and realize, wow, I'm talking to myself like this again. That power of pause can help us think and reflect and practice those ways to reframe our, the thoughts that we have. And then the second thing is how would you talk to a friend who's having a similar kind of situation? You probably wouldn't be so harsh or negative towards them the way you are to yourself. So it can be really healing to talk to ourselves the way we might talk to someone else. Right. Which is so true because yeah, when you think about some of the things you say to yourself and you're like, first of all, oh my gosh, if I said that out loud, that would be kind of embarrassing if other people yeah. knew talk to myself <laughs> that way. But then also certainly wouldn't say it to somebody else. Um, and a lot of times it's, we're in a weird way, we're trying to protect ourselves. We're trying yeah. to be good enough, you know, we're trying to self-correct so that we can be accepted, but that's not how we become accepted. If anything, it's just keeping us further from feeling like we're worthy of being accepted. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like learning to ride a bike. You're going to fall. You're going to scrape yourself. You're going to get hurt. 
but you're going to heal from those injuries and you're going to learn how to ride that bike. And something that seemed really scary at first, really hard, it gets easier and more manageable over time later on. Such a good point. Shervin, thank you so much for all of these great tips today. Where can people find you on social media, online? Yeah, I'm on Instagram at therapy with Shervin or my website, shervin.ca. Well, thank you again for being here. I really appreciate all of your wonderful insights today. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us on the Always Evolving Podcast. We would love it if you would rate, review, and subscribe to help us reach more listeners. And also visit our website, www.evolvecounselingaz.com to sign up for our newsletter. You can also come hang out with us on Instagram at Evolve Counseling AZ. This is Always Evolving with Dr. Liz.